Hello and welcome to another Kit Plus TV. Those of you who have been around a while will remember Lightworks being a major player in the early days of nonlinear editing, which of course is now referred to just as editing. In the early 90s, they were most certainly the preferred tool for the movie industry. It had a panel control surface that actually worked. The hardware was reliable, the software stable, and it concentrated on the craft of editing over and above anything else. More recently, it was part of the mighty edit share and as a free download with paid upgrades if you wanted certain codecs and features, etc. It has maintained a loyal following. Last week, we saw the news that Lightworks and QScan have been acquired and we'd like to welcome into the studio Peter Lambert to tell us more about it. Hello, Peter. Hi there. So nice to be here. How did the acquisition come about and, and why now? Well, Lightworks has been a product that has been alongside another bigger business for a very long time, probably since about uh, 1998. And uh, as not being a core product for uh, a larger organization, uh, there's always been a focus on other things. And Lightworks has continued with its dedicated community, uh, which is pretty substantial but it's not, uh, not everyone is high profile and there are certain places where it's stronger. Uh, so uh, it's just continued as a sort of also run product in a larger organization. Uh, in um, about April, May, uh, myself and James Richings, who was one of the co-owners of EditShare, uh, we'd said, well, why don't we take this and have it as a dedicated company with a group of individuals who are more dedicated to that community, uh, more interested in making content creation tools that are for the not only the Oscar winning uh, high end editors, uh, but all the way through to the prosumer and make the products better for both of those by having, you know, the uh, usability, the accessibility, uh, plus the advanced features for uh, the more sort of power user. So um, we've been working, talking to EditShare for a while. And on the 15th of uh, September, the deal went through. We have a new company. It's LWKS, which has always been the short form for Lightworks. And, the, and LWKS.com has been the Lightworks URL for many years. So, um, Peter, in the intro, Matt mentioned QScan. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that and the challenges it solves for its customers? Yeah, so um, QScan is an intelligent QC application in its own right. So um, companies like NHK, Netflix, Apple, Canal Plus, they use QScan as a uh, quality control uh, application that gives them pass and fail on many different uh, parameters of video uh, for HDR applications, uh, making sure color spaces are right, files are um, valid, there are no corruptions, color spaces um, work properly. Like if you want, if you're expecting a, um, a square pixel, you get square pixels. If you're doing a 420 color space, it's not 411 all of the sort of really technical things that people need for QC. And why it's of interest to us is that uh, we think that part of the creative process is improving and smoothing the workflows for the editor. So rather than this um, current mindset where QC is a, uh, a chore at the end of the uh, creative process, and it needs uh, you know, something like a standards expert to set it up and to be able to interpret the result. We think we should be doing QC all the way along the chain. As you start using your files, um, they will be being QC'd. So you notice if your rushes have got faults in them, uh, things that, are, uh, that you shouldn't be using, dead pixels, whatever it may be, you're warned about that before you get to that um, end of the chain. So we want to combine many of the capabilities of this uh, intelligent QC into Lightworks and also improve a lot of the other things like uh, not having to spend hours transferring media in before you can start working. 
So it's those kind of things that make QScan and Lightworks a good fit. Does, does QScan, is it a sort of hands-off approach then? Is it, it's not a, you're not actually physically, uh, is it kind of like a lookup folder almost? It, does, does it do it in the background without any input from the yeah, it, user it, or it, is it a task they have to do? Yeah. Uh, it isn't a full workflow orchestration device like some things might be, but it does have the ability to wait for folders, give reports, provide XMLs, um, you, it integrates into the Lightworks timeline so that if you have um, something that's uh, flagged, it actually appears in the timeline. Uh, it also works with the edit share flow that way. Uh, plus, it will give out human readable reports and it meets the DPP standards, the Netflix standards, things like that. So it, it, it's, uh, you know, you configure it and you, uh, you can use it in a sort of Dropboxy kind of way deliver to it, receive from it. Oh, go on. Yeah, so that's QScan. I would mean, be interested now, where does Lightworks as a software fit against the, well, quite a large number of different NLEs out there at the moment? Where does it sit? Well, it's kind of an interesting thing. Um, I, I've been working with NLEs for very many years, and one of the uh, big issues is that usability. The people who can walk up to a product and start working it almost immediately with very little instruction. Uh, it's really intuitive. The, the, the product is of high quality, so it's fast. Um, it, you know, we pride ourselves on a multitasking and you know, we've got a really good timeline uh, that allows you to work extremely quickly uh, without having to have you know, drop down menus that have sub menus and, and millions of options. So number one, I would say that we, uh, we concentrate on the user experience uh, rather than trying to cover every single feature of everything that exists. So it's a less of a technical exercise, more of a creative process. Also, I think pretty, I, I can't think of an NLE that isn't uh, a successful NLE that isn't part of a much larger company where it kind of sits alongside and runs in parallel. Uh, we're dedicated to the uh, editing uh, uh, products, market, users. That community is really important to us. Uh, and I think that, um, uh, you know, we, we, we've got more of a connection with our users. The loyalty that um, uh, goes with Lightworks is just extraordinary and something that, you know, we need to uh, make sure that we're part of. So we're not a tech company uh, selling products to a creative community. We're actually part of the same group of people. Mm. Now, Peter, everyone likes a free version of something and you, you do obviously you have the Lightworks free version for download and you've got a subscription package. Can I ask you, uh, firstly, what's the difference in the two? And secondly, what sort of, just out of interest, really, what sort of conversion rate do you see with people upgrading from the free version to the subscription version once they've tried it? Um, the free version um, will work up to 720p. So what we used to call HD ready, and it doesn't have all of the effects and you can't put in things like the um, DNX HD options. Uh, so some of the codecs are limited. Otherwise, it's a fully featured product. Um, the conversion rate from the free version to the pro is about 25%. Uh, so that, you know, there's a, a lot of users who use the free version for the vast majority of their work, and they might take out a month subscription to finish the project, put in some effects and output it. We've got the free version, um, we've got the monthly subscription version, we have a yearly subscription, and then we have an outright purchase, which I think covers the bases. Some people really don't want to have a subscription. They want an outright ownership. Some people um, absolutely just want to, you know, buy one month when they need it and turn it off when they don't. So we're trying to make sure we've got flexible options for people there. Thank you, Peter. So just finally, before we let you go, we don't want to catch you out. Um, and you've been in the industry for a very long time, so this might be a tough one. But tell us something about you that uh, your colleagues um, at Lightworks might not know about you. Uh, well, that's pretty difficult because I do tend to uh, drone on and um, 
let everyone know the kind of the, the little troubles I go through whilst I restore uh, 1960s and early 1970s motorcycles. Um, you know, I, I struggle. It's, it's like a really advanced video game where you come across something that you just can't do. And by using the power of uh, YouTube, uh, forums and other play and friends, uh, you find out how you manage to overcome that seemingly impossible 1960s mechanical technology. And I tell everyone about it at work. Oh, I managed to get the clutch off this week. Uh, so I'm afraid they do know. Uh, and maybe the other thing that people know is I'm a, te I'm a terrible editor. <laughs> <laughs> you know Join the, the club there. Yeah. You want to, yeah. yeah. Well, look, thanks for watching today and thanks to Peter from, let's say, LWKS, well, that works, uh, for coming on the show and to see all of our other videos, interviews, kit reviews, etc. Then head over to kitplus.tv, which is brought to you with the support of Media Proxy. And you can find out more about them at mediaproxy.com. Thank you.